Hello, welcome to introduction to e-marketing. So the first question is how does Google and Facebook make money? The answer is they make money from advertising. So Google has two programs called AdWords and AdSense. So when you search something on Google, you see ads related to what you search for. And AdWords is where advertisers pay Google money to show the ads to targeted users. That means people who are interested, not to everybody. And then Google charges advertisers each time someone clicks on the ad. So you, you are here in Google, you type in something, AdWords will insert an ad related to what you typed in. Say buy shoes or something, it's a shoe ad. And then when you click on it, the shoe company gets charged. And how does it work? AdSense is the opposite of that. In the sense that like you have a website and you're an advertiser and you want to show your ad. But you don't know who's advertising and who's, who your clients are. So instead of trying to do what Google does, you just give all your ads to Google and your website to Google and what happens is Google will show the ad to the, the right person on the right website. And when people click on it, Google will take some share of the money and some share of the money will go to the advertiser, come from the advertiser. So Google acts as an ad broker, like an agent who does connecting the advertiser and the websites. So the three, in the ad, there are three people involved. One is Google, the one advertiser, and the user. And then AdWords is a program that connects all three together. So the, the question is, the user wants to see what is useful to him or her. And advertiser wants to show all the stuff to everyone to get maximum coverage. And Google is in charge of maximizing its profit and its future profit by keeping customers happy and advertisers happy. So user is very important to Google in the sense that like you, Google cannot uh, aggravate the user by showing them wrong ads or something they are not interested in. So Google provides a good experience to the, to, the, to the user by showing them relevant ads, things they are interested in. And advertisers are happy because they are paying less money because they are not just randomly putting up ads but putting up ads only to people who are interested. And how does Google do it? Because Google tracks what people are interested in. So let's look at AdWords and AdSense in detail. And Google makes money out of AdWords and AdSense. So when you when the ad comes on Google uh, website, these these are ads on the on the right side, three ads, top ads. So these are AdWords ads, and also AdWords can serve ads on somebody else's site. Say TechCrunch has a website, but they don't know who to show it to and which person interested in what. They have no idea. But because of cookies, Google knows what you are interested in if you are reading TechCrunch. And then when you look at TechCrunch, there will be a div which is belongs to Google AdWords and Google insert ad out there. That is AdSense. Now this is TechCrunch page. So TechCrunch will charge some money to Google to, to for the placing the advertisement. So Google will take money from advertiser and place it on TechCrunch's site. So TechCrunch makes some money. Google will take the money from advertiser and take some cut out of it. Now what is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is like an internet advertising company, online company that collects ads from different small businesses and shows them to users. And then what is the affiliate job? To generate leads, sales, traffic for merchants who have no time to go on the internet. And what is remarketing? Remarketing is, uh, it, it shows ads to people who have visited your website before. Suppose you are searching for shoes and later on you go to Facebook. Now Facebook somehow figures out that you are searching for shoes on Amazon and then because of some cookies, they shared cookies, they will actually figure out okay and then you will keep seeing shoes ad everywhere you go on Facebook till you end up clicking on it. And Google is the same thing by remembering the previous visit to any place and cookie is a unique number, it's like a token. Google is your browser every time you go to some website and the token records visual website you went to and it uniquely identifies you and but they are not supposed to look at a user 
in, re in reality to preserve privacy. So what's the difference between paid and organic search? So in a Google on a Internet Explorer, Chrome or Firefox, you type in your query out here, like a search query. And then you get like some 2 million results in 0.5 second and the top part is the ad this is the ads and these are ads related to what you typed in and below it is the organic search results these are unbiased this doesn't depend on whether users have actually paid they haven't paid Google this is the people who paid Google so it's in different color but slowly what happens over time is people figure out that this is colored and they don't click on it so then Google slowly decreases the color till you can't even see differentiate either eventually you mix up everything and charge make profit everywhere like Yahoo tried and on the right side are the ads also so the thing is that like we had to use eye tracking software to see what the user looks at and try to place ads where they can be placed where user looks at it if it doesn't find it interesting out there he may look something out here and then these are Google ads another page so there there's these are ad word text ads text ads means uh, this is text that means it's all in text there's no pictures and their rating from users so like people are very influenced by the rating it's a good rating that means not only Google but the users think that like this thing site is good and these are product listings so Google has a huge collection of products so big companies like Walmart send the list of products in XML file every day to Google and Google somehow merges into AdWords and then shows the image and the text and the price from Walmart eBay and these are the free listings organic search web search listings and also there's some shopping results from shopping sites but they don't seem to work well out here but I guess they work in some places so e-marketing online marketing involves what are the different components you have a website there's e-commerce SEO is search engine optimization you make a website so that Google or Bing or Yahoo actually can figure out what your page is about because they have to act it's a machine so machine doesn't really can look at the pictures or understand the English it just knows some keywords it looks at those words and tries to figure out what your website is then also you go to social media like Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter and online networking and post your stuff online and then you have to pay money online pay per click advertising that means you put your ads on different sites like Google and you pay every time somebody clicks on an ad and email marketing is when you send email to lots of people and apps and online tools so you also have apps like an online tool for shopping like Amazon has and content marketing is where you try to market your content you can see all of it online in Google so let's look at an advert account so what happens is Google as an advertiser you go log in with Gmail create an account then you log into advert Google AdWords login log in there and you create an account you put in money into your account you put in your website and then you you say I want to advertise my website on Google and I create an account so so in marketing you learn that like first thing you need to do is create a campaign campaign is what is the what are you trying to sell then you create ad groups so like which are the type of people you're targeting so ad group one two three group your ads into groups a campaign into groups and below in each group there will be lots of ads ad one two three saying buy truck buy car buy Toyota buy uh, Nissan whatever and then then these are like your uh, ads but still which ad to show to which people is the question so what you do is you give it a list of keywords you saying uh, buy car I want to show it to ad one should be shown when user seven buy car so cheap car insurance I want to type that in and then I will see ad number two so keywords are basically what users are typing in and then you want to match it to the ad and Facebook is still smarter it doesn't even ask you adverts and stuff it just figures out it knows who you are what you're searching for what you'll want and then it will show you without it but the thing is that Google tries to preserve your privacy by not showing you things that you may not have typed in suppose you typed in something five minutes ago and then you're making a presentation and you start seeing ads from what you typed in yesterday or something it could be embarrassing your privacy is lost so then it only looks at the last keyword you typed in for ads but Facebook doesn't care Facebook will show you whatever ads whatever life history you have and whatever whoever is your friend what they liked and stuff like basically it's very good and not only that they know who you called up when you called up if you have Facebook or WhatsApp and who you spoke to what you spoke and everything is recorded 
So let's look at a more online terms. ROI means return on investment. You put in five dollars, how much are you going to get back? Affiliate is like a company that does marketing for you. Remarketing is like somebody likes something, you keep marketing the same thing again and again to that person. Cookies are like tokens, like numbers. You give somebody a cookie, it's like giving them a, a token saying that hey like every time you come there you record that okay this guy is like a number plate of a car. Every time you see that car outside your shop you know what they're going to buy. Organic search is a free search. Paid results are what the results at the top which advertisers pay for. And advert as account, campaign, groups and ads. And the best thing is to play around with it. So let's look at more adverts terminology. So campaign, this is one or more ad groups and you can group your campaigns according to geography, devices or type of products you are advertising. Inside the campaign there are a bunch of ad groups. These are the groups of ads shown in your campaign. So groups, ad groups share a budget and then each ad group targets the same set of keywords. You can say how much you want to spend per click on each ad in an ad group. And then ads are the individual text ads or image ads or video ads that you want to show in Google search. Then the most important thing is impressions. Impressions how many times your ad was shown to people. Every time somebody looks at your ad it's an impression. Since the, the cost of impression is so low they measure it in thousand impressions. Cost per thousand impressions. CPM. And then ad is a position. Position 1, 2, 3. So ad position is there. Then your CPC. CPC stands for cost per click. This amount will be charged for uh, if address will be charged if somebody clicks on it. Google will charge him. And CTR is a click through rate. So the quality of an ad is measured in by the number of times it gets clicked divided by the total number of times it's seen. It was shown. So it is measured as a percentage. So 5% CTR is very high and good. Usually like 1 out of 100 clicks on ad you're happy. It's an effectiveness of ad because you want to show your ad only if people are clicking on it. Of course, that means that like, and there are also branding ads where people are not expected to click on it but just keep seeing it again and again. So Facebook is like that, we will keep showing you, say, drink Coca-Cola but you are not going to click on it to buy a Coca-Cola. But it works also. CTR is only when you want to buy something specifically on Google. And then in marketing, the more affiliate terminology for affiliate marketing is cost per sale, CPA. So affiliate purchases goods or per services from a merchant. So they can charge you either cost per sale or cost per acquisition. Like you get a customer, you get charged. And there's CPL, cost per lead. Every time an affiliate refers a visitor to your website, they charge some money. And then cost per click. So Amazon Associates largest uh, affiliate um, program. And Amazon has a lot of features which are different from Google because Amazon also do logistics of products. Then ads have quality. The thing is, uh, some ads are good and some are bad. Then how do you measure it? So the quality you, you give each ad a quality, and the quality of ad is measured by the click-through rate (CTR). The most CT higher the CTR, hundred percent would mean like the most effective ad ever. Everybody clicks on it. And the, low, the zero CTR will be nobody clicks on it. And then that's the CTR. A good ad will have a good CTR. And a landing page. Landing page is when you click on a thing, you land up at some page. Suppose you have an ad for buy shoes. And you land up on a page of a, of a shop, supermarket. And that, so that's not a good landing page. A landing page should be uh, about the shoes that the, the user is looking for. So. When you type on, uh, on Google, say buy shoes, buy Nike shoes, it will, Amazon will show you add to a Nike shoes on Amazon and it's optimi the page is optimized for whatever you're looking for, for the chosen keyword that you're looking for. So landing page and, it, and then relevancy. Relevancy means your ad has to be relevant to, to the, your site and landing page for a good quality score. Basically when you show an ad, it should be relevant to what the user is searching for and the user comes to the site, it should be relevant to the user. Then you get a good quality score for your ad. We'll see how this quality score helps. And then ads have a rank. So given a bunch of uh, ads, it is the ad rank is basically the amount of money you're willing to pay for the, for the ad, the max bid and the quality score. So to get a good 
add rank you need to have a good quality score or you need to pay higher money if your quality is bad you need to pay more money so then like that's how google balances user happiness with advertiser cash flow and the higher the ad rank the, the higher your page appears on the thing on the google search results and the max bid is the maximum you're willing to pay for that it's not what's google to charge you but the maximum you're willing to pay then the quality score is how google views your ad overall ad and the web page it links to and how it relates to the keyword which you're bidding for so you do bid for the keyword saying i'll pay one dollar for buy shoes and then google will decide okay this is a quality score and then google will decide is your call uh, give your quality score based on how relevant you have the ad to the user and how positive user experience once they arrive at your website so google measures how long they, how many people came to your website through the ad how many people looked at it how long they looked at it and so it, it it's dynamic it's not static score it can change every second or every microsecond uh, every time somebody looks at it google will recalculate and say okay like they looked at it they didn't buy anything so maybe your shop is not really good or if they bought something maybe shop is good or they spent a lot of time a longer time is measure of good quality we also have ads on youtube youtube channel and stuff you can see on search on google find out how does google charge youtube charge they can charge is cost per view model so basically every time somebody views a video google will charge a person so what what is the view count at so you can be charged if a user watches 30 seconds or sees a full vi full video if they leave halfway or drop off you don't pay and on the side ads you charge based on whether they're watching the video or not or they click on it or not <coughs> expertise of the website authoritative how authoritative is the website amazon is very authoritative but if you're a small shop you're not authoritative trustworthiness does google know you how long have you been online how much do you spend and how many visitors come to your website are the visitors vis happy so are the ratings there are many ways to decide are you a trustworthy website or not the better the trustworthiness authoritative and expertise the better quality rating you have so what are the ad raters looking for so basically ads should not distract from the main content ads should be there for the users who want them but should be ignorable if you don't if you're not interested it should not be like somebody is pushing ad when you're looking at trying to find something like pop-up ads are example of bad ads and also it should be clear that what is the ad and what is the result you have to label it clearly if it looks like a newspaper article or something it's it's like not good should not be distracting and should not make you difficult from loading or scrolling your page pop-ups are really bad a poor user experience so you can see in this graph that the account suspended google suspends accounts when they are like spamming or having bad ads sites get suspended when they have bad content ads get disapproved if they are not really up to the mark of quality of they are not really selling what they claim to sell so why did yahoo ads yahoo, has, yahoo also had similar ads from 2005 to 2010 so yahoo did many things wrong which which actually google avoided so what are the things they did wrong so google uh, yahoo tried to maximize the profit by maximum cpc cost per click rather than doing quality of relevancy matching they just showed what, if you paid higher money you just got your ad out there and so basically one edge was a company that paid a lot of money and everywhere you, yahoo users went they saw one edge ads so that caused a bad user experience and the second mistake you did was uh, which is different from print ads is that online ads you can continuously adjust your prices google adjusts its price for every single click they have a different pricing model so google has something called smart pricing to optimize ad click loss as google did google uses something as uh, yahoo use static pricing so what happens is suppose you charge one dollar and nobody is there you can actually lower your prices dynamically which Yahoo doesn't didn't do. So Google will lower the price or increase the price. Suppose uh, and now does Uber also does it. There's a traffic jam, they'll increase the jack up the price. 
and then the network has to be very deep yahoo ad network is very shallow it only reaches some of the people google network goes around the world and has and the more bigger the network the more advertisers you have and it's a it's a pinball effect more and more people come to your network and then you have better content and you have better machine learning and a better quality so yahoo is there's no free lunch if you fool the users too many times they go away so if you look at a yahoo search page is full of clickbaits what is a clickbait it looks like something you want to click on free card 100% free interest cards and top credit cards and so like uh, basically they 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 want you to click on it so people when you say they say free or something they'll click on it and then they, they land on the wrong page and then there are too many ads it's very hard to tell what's ad what's a result so users are confused and not everyone is really into digital marketing they won't even tell the difference they'll just click on something like the first thing and they'll land on the wrong page and then they'll decide okay how doesn't work so what is the difference between yahoo ads and yahoo organic results the placement is at the top of the page and then background color yahoo doesn't have any difference in color between ads and results so people can't tell difference so there's a small text next to the url and then there are many differences you can look at it later so the other thing is click area so anywhere on the ad you click you land up on the ad but for for the result you only you have to click on the title so basically they give all the importance to ads but not to results so what happens is you're trying to maximize your profit but not worried about the users so the users left and when the user leaves nobody the nobody will pay for your site and what's cloaking cloaking is website cheating so basically so it's showing a different content to the to the user and to the search engine so when google looks at a shop you may show it like a lot of nice uh, cheap uh, items but then when users look at it they'll see expensive items and badly bad bad quality stuff so cloaking is basically showing different things to like when an inspector comes you show them good food and when they're really selling some bad stuff is basically google tries to use different ip addresses and tries to look around and if you, it finds you you're cloaking your website you basically get banned from google search so basically cloaking is like cheating users telling google that you have good stuff when you actually have bad stuff and references you can look what on many sites you can just type into google and find it okay thank you